now that you're familiar with the law of demand and understand how changes in the price of something affect how much demand we have for it, providing that all other factors remain equal, it's time to look what happens when one of those factors does change. Remember, this ceteris paribus thing, it's just a learning tool to help us focus on one thing at a time, on our way to understanding the bigger picture. Now, what other factors, apart from price, influence our demand for pieces of fried chicken? Well, according to our demand equation, factors might include taste, income, the number of other potential buyers, the price of related goods, and numerous other factors. Let's first see how a change of income might affect demand. I'm quite a big guy, so if I had more income, I'd definitely be eating more chicken. I need my KFC fix, then I just buy the little, like, that meal in the box or the streetwise or whatever. But if I had more income, then I could get the whole bucket and I could just sit the whole bucket. It would be amazing. And, and sometimes we even just buy the chips and share them because we're students. But if we both had more income... If we income, had more income, we would each buy a packet of chips and a bucket. And, and the burger and the bucket and the mash with the gravy. Yeah. From this we can see that a positive relationship exists between income and the demand for pieces of fried chicken. In economics, fried chicken is therefore classified as a normal good, because demand increases as income increases. In other words, if you can afford more, you'll buy more. This is true for most goods, but as always, there are exceptions. There are some things which you'll actually buy less of if your income increases. These are called inferior goods, and demand for these goods goes down instead of up as income increases. But what is an inferior good? I stopped drinking the cheap wine that I drink every weekend. OK, we're getting ahead of ourselves. Let's get back to the table for normal goods and how the behaviour of households changes when their income increases. We'll start with the market demand table which already tells us, given the current income of households, how many fried chicken pieces they intend to purchase at any price. Now, assuming that the income of households increases, what would happen to the quantity of fried chicken pieces demanded at a price of 7 rand? As we've seen, if your average household can afford to buy more fried chicken pieces, they will. So let's say their market demand increases to 16 pieces. And at six rand, with their higher income, they might now buy 22 pieces, and so on. And now, we do it graphically. Using the market demand curve we created earlier, we'll enter the new income information into our table and plot the new market demand curve. OK, do this one with me. OK, so at a price of seven rand, the quantity demanded is now 16 pieces. At 6 rand, it's 22 pieces. At a price of 5 rand, 28 pieces. At 4 rand, 34 pieces. At 3 rand, it's 40. At 2 rand, 46. And finally, at 1 rand, the quantity demanded is 52. Combining the points, we have a new market demand curve, which we will call D1, D1. Let's interpret these curves. What are the similarities and differences between curve D1, D1 and curve DD? Well, they're both downward sloping, but D1, D1 lies to the right of DD. We can say that the curve has shifted to the right, and the cause of this rightward shift is the increase in household income, which leads them to demand more of the good at any price. 